This video will contain a tutorial on how to build this fish animation. It was supposed to be something else, but spoiler alert, things didn't go as planned. You see, I thought it would be a cool idea to try coding underwater, so I waterproofed this keyboard right here and brought my underwater camera to film what I do over there. I tied weights around my waist so I can focus on coding and won't float all over the place. I was pretty much ready, so... Yeah, that small table I took to be comfortable was really buoyant. I expected that to some extent. It's why I weighted my keyboard before putting it in the bag, but I didn't think it will be so unstable. Anyway, no big deal. Just proceed without the table, or so I thought. Okay. This doesn't work at all. The water pressure outside is so strong that it basically presses all the characters, all the keys, at the same time. So, uh, I can't do it. Not with this keyboard, at least. But since I'm here, I guess I'm just going to try to use this normal keyboard. <laughs> And type on the side of the lake. So, let's see how this goes. I'm basically going to initialize a canvas with ID my canvas, and I'm going to give it a background. By the way, I memorized this whole thing. So, I can do it with no problems now. And uh, in the script tag, I'm gonna paste these emojis. So that's why I needed that copy paste before. And uh, I'm going to define now the canvas and get the context, the 2D context, like this. And if I refresh, you will see this happening now. So we have our canvas there on screen and it has this dark sea green color. Hmm. I <laughs> wish I could have filmed this underwater as planned, but might as well make this tutorial anyway, I guess. Okay, so next I'm gonna define this um, fish class. So I'm going to say fish uh, and then the constructor will take the image as a parameter. I'm going to set it here as the argument and I'm going to have random values for x and y. Uh, they will just spawn randomly on the screen like this. Uh, wait, made a typo right here. So let's close up the constructor and uh, update this. Just filling the text. So in the update method, I just move the fish one pixel to the right on each frame. And uh, I'm going to use the fill text method to draw this image. This image is going to be an emoji, a character basically. And uh, we can use the fill text to do this. So. We still don't have anything visible yet. I'm gonna need to implement the animate uh, function. And, but before that, let's define some fish. So I'm going to say here, the fishes, which is a plural for fish. It's gonna be a new array, and I'm gonna put 50 of these inside of the array, like so, with an element from this emoji array, so that Every odd one is going to be, um, I mean, any, any every odd i value is going to be um, this blue fish, and every even value is going to be this brown fish from there. So 
Now I'm going to have an even number of uh, these fish. And I think the pro plural for fish is fish, but I'm writing here fishes because it's more clear that there are many of them uh, in the array. And now we animate. So this animate function is going to be uh, the thing that is going to make them actually appear on the screen and update on, on each frame. So let me go down here and uh, write the animate function. Like this, we begin by emptying the canvas, the whole canvas, so the width and the height. And uh, we are going to go through each of these fish. I'm going to use here for each and this arrow function notation let's code basically and uh, update each fish so it's going to move one pixel to the right and redraw it with this uh, fill text method from there and let me just request animation frame this is going to make it loop as fast as it can and refresh and now you can see some fish moving to the right they're facing towards the left which is kind of funny so um and they are quite small, but let's fix this facing thing first. So I'm going to flip each fish, each, each fish uh, to the right first. And I'm going to do that by saving the canvas context, translating to the fish location. So I'm going to have to put 0, 0 at the fill text method below. And then I'm going to say uh, scale with minus 1 horizontally and uh, one vertically, so vertically I'm not changing anything. And here, let's remember to put zero, zero, and uh, restore the context like this. So now all our fish are facing towards the right. But uh, what I want them to have is uh, different sizes, so that it looks like some fish are closer to the screen and some are further in the background, so the bigger ones are closer. And I also want to toggle this direction so that uh, you can go, um, the fish can go to the right, but also to the left. Uh, yeah, so the speed of the fish is going to depend on this direction. So I'm going to go here and say the size of the fish is going to be a random value. And I just like these uh, 20 and 10 there. Basically, it means that the fish sizes are going to be between 10 and 30, this time randomly chosen. And the direction I don't need to save as an attribute. Um, and I'm going to define it as random minus 0 0.5. So this is going to give me a value between minus 0 0.5 and plus 0 0.5. And using the sign function there is going to make it either a minus 1 or a 1, basically. So this direction we will use to multiply um, the size width to get the speed like this. So the speed is going to be a positive value if it's going towards the right and a negative value if it's going towards the left. Not much um, magic here. But we need to update it here below, like this. And uh, here, this flipping that we did previously should only happen if the speed is positive, because that's when the um, uh, fish is going towards the right. Otherwise, we, win we want it to be the default facing towards the left there. And uh, let me set a font here that is dependent on this size value that we computed uh, previously. Otherwise, the fish will all look the same size. Um, I think the speed here is way too much. So let me just multiply this by 0. 0 0.02. Save and let's refresh this. And now it looks much better. So it looks much better. So nice. But uh, one problem is that the fish are going outside the screen. <laughs> and um, yeah, and when they're outside the screen, uh, we want them to go back inside the screen. So what I'm going to do is teleport them on the other side of the screen so that the animation wraps around somehow. So I'm going to go here and say if um, the x is larger than the width of the canvas, then the x is going to be zero. And if the x is less than zero, it's going to be the width of the canvas, basically teleporting them on the other side of the canvas like this. And now when we refresh, we see that it does indeed happen. So 
for example, this blue fish is going to disappear right here and it comes back right here. But the fish are blinking a little bit on the side of the screen there. So I'm going to fix this by adding a margin here um, uh, to somehow compensate for it. So let's say margin is equal to 100 pixels. And I'm going to add this margin here and subtract this margin here. And this is now going to get rid of this effect where the fish are blinking close to the side of the of the screens. And the um, final thing what I want to do is that I would really like that these small fish, like the smaller the fish are, the more in the background they appear to be. And that's currently not the case, really. So if you look at this fish here, um, okay, not a very good example. Let me try to refresh. Yeah, so this, this fish went on top of this other fish right here and also happened for this brown one now. So the way I'm going to fix this is basically sort the fish uh, in order of their size so that the larger ones are going to be uh, at the end. And that means that they're going to be drawn later in, um, in the sequence. So I'm going to fix this by going just here and typing sort. And I'm going to take two fish like that, and I'm going to say the function here is a size minus b size, like this. And refresh, and now we have everything as we wanted. Okay, so that's it for today. It didn't work at all as I expected, but uh, sometimes these trial and error things are needed. And who knows, maybe someday I'm going to do this again. But um, See you guys. <laughs>